Hey guys, Tyler uh, back with AR from Under Armour here with Jim again and his unique set of experience and skill sets. And uh, what we're gonna do is do another reaction video watching American Sniper and uh, we'll let you know our opinion on what's real and what's not. And uh, Jim has um, a unique perspective on this, yep. so. So uh, Chris Kyle is a good friend of mine. Uh, I've known him for many years uh, before he, he, was, he passed away. Um, I was actually a task to task unit bruiser during this time frame. Um, and actually when this movie was supposedly supposedly made. Um, great guy, great team guy. So so what is Task Unit Bruiser? How does it how does it relate to this? So when you deploy you're, you're, you typically deploy in a task unit which comprises of a couple platoons um, and then some command and control. Chris was actually part of Task Unit Bruiser. Uh, Jocko Wilnick was his commander. Um, I was actually attached to Task Unit Bruiser during the time frame that we were in Ramadi. Oh wow. Could you have been in a scene or what was portrayed in this movie? And what, what was your experience like when you first watched this? Yeah, so my wife and I went and saw this in IMAX. Uh, and my wife typically doesn't like to watch movies like this because I usually I pick them apart. And again, same thing, right? So as we're watching the movie, I'm like, I was there for that. That didn't happen that way. That didn't happen that way. Um, we did, that was done differently, right? But again, right. It's, it's Hollywood. They're going to take some liberties to make it a good movie. Um, again, Chris was a great guy, a real good friend. Um, and, and the movie was actually pretty good. So. Yeah, that, that, that's actually nice to hear because some they just they miss it so hard sometimes, they, they especially on important topics right. or important. Nope, I yeah, agree. It, it's clearly a movie about an important character, right? right. Chris, you, Kyle, Chris was a great American. So. So. so this is his supposed two thousand yard shot. What round do you think he's using in the movie versus what would you use? Really um, like from what I can tell, it's a three hundred win mag, and again, to reach out two thousand rounds with a three hundred, can it be done? Probably. I'd imagine perfect conditions, though. Yeah, that, you would have to be. And as stretch. you can tell, there's quite a bit of wind. And, yeah. Um, and Chris is good at what he does. So. What would you rather have if you had a caliber choice? Oh, uh, either a 338 or, or something, some of the new stuff they're coming out, like a 375. Oh, okay. okay. And you can consistently shoot out to, to that type of range. Right. But they did a good job as far as all the gear and the equipment. That's yeah. that's the same stuff we were wearing. So, I mean, right down to the optics on the weapons and so. everything spot on. Yeah, yeah gear, gear yeah. helmets. Yeah, I, and I also think there's kind of a misconception in real life and shooting long distances. I think people think it's easy to hit something at a thousand <laughs> yards. It, 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 Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I feel like it's not as easy as people make it out to be. No, it's just like everything else, right? Whether you're shooting pistol or rifle, right. it's practice, 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 right, right? right? So you need to be on the gun all the time. And it helps if you have a spotter that's with you constantly and consistently, right? So you have somebody that you can count on to call wind, it's going to be right. right. And when you're talking a 2,000 yard shot, I mean, that is... Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot of wind to affect the bullet, right? Right, right. Yeah. right. And you're shooting somebody in the head, so you have an 8 inch target at, target at 2,000 yards. That's... That's an impressive shot, right? So, I mean, for us, it was anything within 500 yards should be a gimme. Right. And that's kind of what you train to. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's a huge shot. <laughs> <laughs> Requesting QRF, being pinned down by sniper fire on approach of high value target. Right, now they're just waiting for the QRF to come in. And again, that, that was the nice thing about Iraq when you called QRF. It, it was inbound pretty fast, so, unlike Afghanistan, right? You call QRF in Afghanistan, you could be out there for a while. What, what, do you, what would times like be for you in, in relation to the... In, re, in real life, in, in, in Iraq, I mean, if it was well planned, right? You had a good QRF, armored unit coming in, you, you're talking five, ten minutes out, right? Because they're, they're typically staged, they're ready to go, because they, right, right. they know that you can get into it at any time. Right. Um, and the, the guys that we had supporting us in Ramadi were awesome. In a longer situation where QRF's a little bit more of a ways out, what would be what would cause them to be further out? Just the terrain, the mission. Yeah, so the terrain or, or, or your danger areas, right? So right. there's some parts in in, our, in Ramadi that uh, U.S. forces typically didn't go because they were heavily IED, right? So you had guys rolling in with M1 Abrams that were still getting still getting blown up by really? IEDs, wow. right? And wow. Disable an M1. So um, I mean. Uh, I can't imagine the situation of having the speed versus not, right? Five, five minutes to 30 minutes is oh, yeah. that's that's a, huge, a huge, huge amount of time. Right? Yeah, significant. Um, so you, we typically carry very heavy, right? And that's the big right. thing with us and the teams is we carry a lot of firepower so we can suppress suppress the incoming fire and, and, and move. So. People might want to know, what, what was your loadout like? How many mags would you run? I, I, I carried out? really heavy because it's the last thing I want to do is run out of bullets, right? So you typically 14 M4 mags um, okay. and anywhere from four to six pistol mags. And then again, you carried extra ammo for your, uh, 
typically your your 60 gunner so, and your automatic rifle stuff so 60 or a saw rifle sidearm 14 mags armor yep. that's a yeah you get pretty heavy at, yeah at that point you're not worried about how heavy your armor is it's yeah. all the other stuff that you have with right you. right so. that's an interesting way to put it that, that it is, is. And yeah. it, you know you got much more comfortable with your armor as we we progressed uh, and guys started taking rounds right and the armor saved their lives so do you have any experience with that where somebody armor has saved somebody's life? That, that yeah, so uh, a good friend of mine, he's a retired SEAL now, a SEAL chief uh, in Ramadi, uh, doing a, a HVT, high value target hit. Uh, got shot 27 times. Oh, so wow. I think it was 16 or 17 rounds to his body armor. Really? Um, and still walked back to the helicopter. So, so I think a, a, lot of, a lot of guys want arm, they, they want Iron Man. Which just, it, it's, yeah. it's not a thing. If we could have it and you could move it, it would be fantastic. Oh, exactly. Yeah. There's a reason it's not a thing yet. There's some point where you have to trade off uh, how do I want to be able to move quickly right? and how heavy do I want to be, right? So there's that trade off. Right. It, 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 and you can still return fire. You can still move with areas that aren't a one-stop shot, which would be your heart, your lungs, right. your head. Correct. And those are things, helmets, chest right. armor, right? That's what, that's what keeps you in the fight, allows you yep. to return fire. Um, taking 27 rounds and 16 of them being on your chest plate is insane and be able to walk home yeah that's it's pretty impressive that is yeah that's so i think the the conception now and the image now with people who are involved or somebody who doesn't have any level of experience is you're just on a rooftop somewhere kind of by yourself or you have a spotter right. and it's just you guys out in the open you're alone and you're supporting a, a forward advancing team right. is there a reality of that who's behind you who's watching now you? typically what? typically you have a security team with you so it's not just a two-man team running around okay. the city uh, typically you carry some type of security assist, uh, assistance with you right. whether it be inherently within out of your own team um, we had other units that were supporting us uh, if there was an army unit that we were supporting typically they would give us some guys that we would help train to okay. what level that we were comfortable with to actually maintain um, the building that we were going in so you go clear the building right. set up a perimeter and they would do all the marshalling take care of there's anybody in the house they take care of the marshalling and then we would go set up an op Okay. Right, um, and the sniper hunt. Um, thank you, Jim, for being here. Uh, I'm excited to to be working with you on this, and I think your targets are fantastic, and uh, your experience and skill set is just so amazing and so unique in your accomplishments. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's and, been a great career. You know, it's 20 plus years of being in the teams, working with some great people. Um, got to do some really cool things. Um, and then again, it, like you said, the partnership with the AR-500 is perfect. Right, it's a really good target system. It runs great, um, and you guys got some great armor. So. It works well. Well, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It helps us tremendously to get the word out. As you guys know, if you're on social media and you're anything involved with firearms, um, your algorithm. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's not good, right? We're in, a, we're in an uphill battle here getting exposure and getting the word out. Um, so make sure to check out uh, TMG, Jim's website. You can find the same stuff on air armorcom along with our body armor and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll keep these videos coming. It, it's a nice change of pace for us. We like doing it. We like... Yeah. It forces us to step back and do a different mindset from what we do as professionals um, and hopefully answer some questions that might be interesting for you guys. Yeah, so again, if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks again.